Brian Robinson, who came on pretty strong this year. In fact, Brian Robinson and Bijan Robinson were right next to each other in terms of uh, best ball value rating. But Brian Robinson had uh, a pretty high variance, 39%. He had a couple major spike weeks, including running back one overall finishes in some weeks because of the usage in the passing game that we had not seen last season. So this year in 2023, 36 receptions, 367 yards last year, only nine receptions, 60 receiving yards. Robinson finishes running back 22, but he was the running back one overall in week 10 against Seattle on only 51% of snaps and the running back one week two against Denver on 51% of snaps. So this is a player that we've seen some major spike weeks from, but my concern is that there's a new offense that's going to be implemented here in Washington. Ron Rivera is already out. Sam Howell is not guaranteed his, his job as the quarterback. There's been some chatter about the bears situation trading the number one pick. I think a natural trade partner if they're looking to stick with Justin Fields, is the Washington Commanders. They only move down one spot, and they can accumulate a little bit more, and Washington is going to look for their their quarterback of the future. Caleb Williams is a, is a Washington guy. Uh, this is very much a, a big market possibility, and I, the, the Washington Commanders have been looking for a quarterback for a long time. And so with that new offense... How are you approaching this ambiguity that Brian Robinson, who was the lead back for the last two years when, since he had been drafted third round pick out of Alabama, he's had shifts in roles. He was loved by the coaching staff. We anticipate a new coaching staff. So how, how much, how nervous are you to draft a Brian Robinson type of player whose majority of work was received through was received through his the, the volume, the carries. Yeah, I think there's one big thing that no one's really talking about right now, and that's Eric Bieniemy. I think he is the key component as to whether or not Brian Robinson kind of duplicates his success uh, next year. And the reason for that is you look at what Jarek McKinnon did. You look at what even a guy like CEH did back when he was a rookie. And then you look at what a guy Isaiah Pacheco did coming out of the backfield in Kansas City when Eric Bieniemy was there. And then you look at what a guy like Brian Robinson did, and they call it the same path. So I think it'll be very interesting to see. I can't see a different head coach wanting to get rid of Bieniemy. I, I just can't see it. He's one of the best offensive minds in football. How he's not a head coach. That's a different topic for a different day, but I do not. I mean, know. maybe he becomes the head coach of Washington, but he could be. But if he stays there, I, I think there is a lot to be optimistic about in regards to Brian Robinson. I think he, like you said, he had a couple of PPR or half point PPR overall, number one running back fantasy finishes. And to go along with that, he had quite a few games where he was an RV. Three. Borderline RB1, RB2 running back as well. There is plenty of optimism for him to be there. Another year in that same system would do him a lot of good if they keep the enemy. So I think he is a key component to determining Brian Robinson's value moving forward. I also think an important point is that Washington may be in the market for looking for a different running back. Antonio Gibson is a free agent in 2024, an unrestricted free agent. And so I think that if Brian Robinson continues to get his volume, this could be a running back that can give you top 18, top 15. And if he's being valued at almost running back 30, that's an auto smash at that point. Like just draft wide receivers early and take some Brian Robinson. Like we're, we're talking about values here. Just be a little disciplined in your drafting and wait for a guy like Brian Robinson who has earned carries in the past, who has shown high-level elite production from a fantasy perspective. No, he's never going to be the bastion of efficiency. Like his efficiency metrics, he's 35th in true yards per carry. But last year, 15th in 
yards per touch, 19th in juke rate, 24th in breakaway run rate. Like he's fine. There's not, that's not red flag level. That's okay. We, we can play with him. He's going to give you a little bit of something, something, and perhaps undervalued if he's going as almost running back 30. So yeah, give me a, a lot more Brian Robinson. If this is how the market is going to be treating him with maybe a more explosive offense, Sam Howell, as much as he was able to keep up in some of those shootout games, you just imagine it's Caleb Williams. Yeah, the sky's the limit there. And again, to your point, if he's going to go as RB30, I'm going to smash it all day long. He's not that super flashy pick that you're like, oh, he's a... Uh, you're show your friends. Himself. You're going to be like, hey, guys, look, I drafted Brian Robinson. You know, like, <laughs> I got him in the eighth round. Aha. <laughs> but <laughs> no, Robinson I mean, was fifth among all running backs in yards per route run, number one in yards per reception. He had an 8% target share, which was respectable, but... <laughs> the Washington can only go up 32nd in team run plays per game because their defense was so bad. You can imagine some more volume rushing wise and goal line wise coming his way in the future.